Well, hello everybody. It's me again, Yuliani. Welcome to another series of linguistics for dumb me, where I'll be explaining linguistics topics in a simple way because of my slow processing brain. In this video, I'm going to talk about speech acts, the sequences of words produced into an utterance, which is more powerful than we can think of. Huh? I'm not going to give long and complicated explanations about speech acts like other videos because, as you know, other people in those videos are way smarter than me, and I'm just me. This speech act video is divided into two parts. In the first part of the video, which is this one, I'm going to give you the definition of speech acts and the levels of speech acts. In the second part, I'll explain elocutionary force indicating devices or IFIDs, the classifications of speech acts, and the differences between direct and indirect speech acts. I'm also going to give some illustrations and examples so we can reach the same point of views on speech acts. Let's start, shall we? So, what is a speech act? Why did I say that the utterance was more powerful than we could think of? A speech act, according to Yule, is an utterance which contains an action. Wait a minute! All of you might have an experience that your mum or anyone in your family sent you a text message asking you to do something like picking up the laundry? When you read the message, what did you do? Did you just read it and ignore it? Or did you fulfill what was instructed? If you did what the message told you to do, then the message was also an action of order. So your mom or whoever sent you the text ordered you to pick up the laundry through a text message. The text message was an utterance, and the utterance had an action performed within, that is, order. That is what a speech act is about. There is an action behind an utterance, be it in written or spoken speech. Now that you know what a speech act is, you must also know that speech acts don't just happen. There are levels of speech acts that speakers must undergo. Some pragmatists call it the types of speech acts. Some also use forces. But I'll just use levels of speech acts. Yes! I too am a pragmatist, so I can basically coin different term and make it into a theory, can't I? I'm going to explain the levels so elaborately that you'll understand why I name it levels of speech acts. There are three levels of speech acts, namely locutionary act, elocutionary act, and perlocutionary act. The first level, the locutionary act, is the basic act. It is the literal utterance, or exactly what is said or written. In this level, when I tell you, I just made hot coffee, it means I make a statement that I made coffee. That's it. The utterance I say is in the form of statement, positive sentence in simple past tense. But what is the actual purpose of my telling you that? The hidden meaning behind I just made hot coffee can then be interpreted in the next level, elocutionary act. Elocutionary act is where hearer interprets what the speaker says. This level, as you said, is indeed the core of speech acts. He states that speech act is commonly taken as merely elocutionary acts. 
Now, in elocutionary act level, what does it mean when I say I just made hot coffee? You may interpret what I say by relating it to the context of the conversation. For instance, you just arrived at my house. It's raining, and I tell you that. You probably take it as an offer that I'm offering you hot coffee. How you respond to my offer of coffee belongs to the next level of speech act, that is, perlocutionary act. Perlocutionary act is the effect of what the speaker says on the hearer, aka the hearer's response. The perlocutionary effect or the response can be an action done by the speaker. An utterance, or even silence. Usually, the speaker already expects the outcome from the utterance given by the speaker. So, when I say, "I just made hot coffee as an offer," I have already expected that you would like some coffee. Commonly. The response will also be in line with what the speaker has anticipated, so you'll probably respond, "I'd love some coffee." Sure, yes, I need coffee, or other similar responses. But there are times when the response is not what we have assumed. For example, you respond my offer with. I'm good, thanks. Which means you refuse my offer. Plus, if you are Sundanese and you reply my offer with manga, I would be confused whether you'd like coffee or you just refuse my offer. Man, this Sundanese manga is really ambiguous. Now you must know that in interactions or conversations. There must be role changing between communicators. A speaker becomes a hearer, and a hearer becomes a speaker. That's just inevitable because it's an interaction, not a monologue. The perlocutionary act given by the hearer to respond the speaker's utterance might invite another response from the speaker. For example. If you respond my offer of coffee with "I'm good, thanks," it's probable that I negotiate and utter, "Are you sure? It's latte, your favorite." And believe it or not, are you ready? Even the perlocutionary act, aka the response. Can be another locutionary and elocutionary acts. <gasps> yes, your response, which belongs to the level of perlocutionary act, now becomes a new speech act, a new locutionary, and a new elocutionary act. So, in this interaction, I. Who made the first speech act to offer you coffee, but you rejected? Become the hearer who makes a locutionary act from your elocutionary act of refusing. These three levels of speech act can go on and on like never-ending ride. That's why I describe the levels as a triangle. The first point is the locutionary act, what is said. The second point is the elocutionary act, the true meaning and purpose. The third point is the perlocutionary act, the response from the hearer. In real life interactions, the perlocutionary act can actually be another locutionary and elocutionary act. Except when communicators decide to end the conversation, or there's a sudden change of topic, which seldom happens, really. 
Do you get why I use the term levels of speech acts instead of types of speech act now? The three levels must occur from one sequence to another, starting from, of course, the locutionary act level. We can't skip any level and jump to the next level because that's how we interpret the message behind what is stated and how we can give appropriate response. Alright, the first part of speech act video is done now. Watch part 2 for more speech act understanding. See you everyone!